everybody, it's Cinnamon Cooney, your art Sherpa, and today I'm so excited to bring to you a weirwood tree from Game of Thrones. Winter is here and it's time to paint about it. So get your paint, get your brushes, get your Q-tips and your palette knives. Come back and meet me at the easel right now. We're going to get our fan on. So we can get our fandom on and start having a lot of fun. Let's look at our materials we're going to be using in today's project. I have a 9 by 12 canvas board pre-gessoed ready to paint. You don't need to do another thing to it. Over here I have a deep yellow, I have a blue, I have black, I have white, I have dark red, I have light red, two palette knives, bunches of q-tips, brushes for acrylic paint. If you want information on the exact colors used, where to get them, anything at all, always check the description below. We're in, we also have a free traceable. Let's get started getting this painting in. This is a one inch wide synthetic bristle brush for acrylic painting. It's not gonna hold too much water. I'm gonna dip it in my water, drag off the extra, and I'm gonna start with my yellow sunlight that is coming in here and impacting in my wear wood. I'm gonna load the yellow on my brush and I'm gonna load the white on my brush. I'm not gonna try to mix them together. I want them to be a little bit streaky. I come and add a little black to the mix. And the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make my ray of sun from the upper left angling towards the right, lower right. Just pulling your ray of sun across like this. This is your ray of sun. You want it to be streaky. You want it to be a cloudy day. I'm gonna let it be wider at the bottom and narrower at the top. Once I have that in, I can get a little more yellow on my brush and a lot more white. Grab a little of the black again. You can see how I just use it on the edges, barely any. And I'm gonna come here and I'm gonna pull up the magic glow that you might expect around the weirwood. Picking up all my colors again, just to make sure that there's the hint of a glow. I'm following the angle of my light, and letting it be streaky. That's the goal here, let it be streaky. When you're happy with that, rinse that out, and we'll get the rest of our winter day in, because winter is here now. Okay, so pull your blue out, lots of blue. Get your white on your brush and get a stronger amount of black on this mix, but not a lot. See, I'm just doing the corners. And I'm gonna come here from the top, pulling down, still allowing this to streak. You can kind of blend these two seams together that are coming from the tree. And you can see how it blends here in the yellow. Here we go, a little more blue, a lot more white, some more black. There we go, it's a cold, wintry day. Just making that dramatic sky. This is a real easy sky to make. A little more black on my brush. A little white. You can see I'm just working this dark day in. If your brush gets too dry, you can always put just a little water on it and drag it off. So you have a nice flow. Just keep that and do that all the way to the corner. If it gets too, not, you know, breezy enough, not wintry enough, add white and black and come and streak this up because you want this to be streaky. There we go. That's what we want, streaky. Let's do this over here. Blue, white, Tip of black. There we go. Sometimes I have to move this to the edge to get a good blend. And then I'm going to pull this down as well. All right, I'm gonna wipe off my brush, rinse it out. 
And I want to take my white paint and I get it from the other side. And my yellow, I just want to make sure that this is streaky. So make sure that this is streaky. There we go. That's perfect. Now dry your canvas so you can use the traceable to transfer the image on. They have the image here. On the back, I've rubbed white charcoal. You could do graphite pencil. Either is okay. I'm going to tape this down in a couple of places so it doesn't move. And I'm going to very carefully trace over all the lines with my pencil pressing pretty hard so that the charcoal transfers to the canvas. Once you have your image on the canvas and you can see all your transfer lines, let's go ahead and paint all of the tree in with white paint because where would trees have white bark? All right, I have a number four round here. I'm going to drag off the extra water and I'm gonna get this in my paint. This is a soft body paint like this here. And what I find is that uh, heavy body paint is better for palette knife and soft body paint is better to paint in these kinds of smooth areas for silhouettes. But you use what you have. Paint in all of the tree lines that you have with your white paint. Remember to lighten your brush if you want the stroke to get skinnier. So when I'm pressing it in, it's Thicker when I press harder and the line gets thinner when I press lighter. So do this, all of the lines, very carefully painting in twice. Now dry it and do that second coat. Once you have your white tree in, go ahead and paint the rest of your outlines in black. That's your stones and your crow. Notice that I'm dipping the paint in the tip here and I'm not getting it all over the brush. And again, I'm still just not pressing very hard where I want a fine line. Go ahead and paint this all in black. We'll talk again when we get to the crow. Okay, so you've got your stones in and your ground is magical. It's time to paint the mystical three-eyed crow. So I have a prediction. You're gonna be able to do this absolutely for sure, but first we're gonna switch brushes. My recommendation is to switch to a smaller detail brush so that you have better control in these tiny spaces. This is a number zero round. It's a small detail. I'm gonna get this in my acrylic paint and just have a nice load on it. And so when I come to my crow, I'm going to find that it's much easier to get around all these detail lines, even his legs. So I can make the teeny tiny little lines that I would expect to have on a crow's legs, right? So this is one of the very iconic uh, characters in a sense if you think about it in the show because he lets everybody know what's going on and then they also send all like their terrible news through crows so you know it's super important this is the mystical one we're painting him from the side so we don't actually see his third eye but it's there but first when we go to paint him in I'm gonna just do the tail like this I'm just gonna flick my brush to just sort of imply his tail. And I'm gonna do the same here on the wings and then all the rest in black. I'll come back with white paint. 
after all my leaves are in and he's dry to give him his eyes and his details. The next part is a really cool trick with palette knives that I'm going to show you exactly how to do. So it's good to dry your painting before you get that started. This type of palette knife techniques works really well when the painting is dry because we're going to be just skipping over the top. We're going to start by putting in a little texture and interest to our where wood trees bark. That way when we put in the signature face, it's going to look really, really good. So this is a long diamond. These come in packages. Um, I have a package of this, but you can get these in packages of, of plastic palette knives. Though I know someone who cuts uh, credit cards and does this. So you're going to take this knife and I'm going to pull out, say, a little bit of white and a smidge of black. And I'm going to kind of smush them a bit together. I think the kind of paint that comes in a tube like this is best for palette knife work because it's called heavy bodied. Just an opinion that I have. So we're going to do that right there. Okay, and so it's a gray and it's a little bit streaky. Rub it off, pull it up. Now I'm going to come onto my tree and I'm going to come from the right hand side and I'm going to just skip a little bit of this bark. Careful with my knife. Doesn't have to be everywhere. I'm going to come over here and come back in. I'm making just a little, you can use the tip here and push it around. I'm just creating a little bit of interest. And this is why on the tree I like the slenderer knife because it gives me a little bit of control in a tight curve. But again, you could cut your own in the shape you want. Really? Really am excited for the new season of Game of Thrones. I am super fascinated to see where we end up. Just adding a little bit of bark. I don't have to go all the way to the ends of the branches because those are going to have leaves on them. So I just want this soft gray on here. The tree will still feel very white. Now a neat thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put my texture over this and that'll push that one branch back. Don't worry about being perfect. You don't need to be on your little tree. Just anywhere that the branch is pretty thick. I'm going to just put a little of the texture there. Now, while that's resting, I'm going to put snow on my rocks. I'm going to actually use my more diamond headed knife for that. And I'm going to load it up, what over here? Maybe I'll load it up to the left hand. See this left hand side of the knife? Because I'm going to try to say that the snow is coming in this way. And I'm going to move my board so I'm comfortable. I'm going to come on the edge. And I'm going to just let this skip, creating the stone by where I'm just lightly touching the knife to the canvas. See how that just creates the snow? I'll come up between the roots, but just a little bit, just moving and pressing around. See? I'll load up to the left hand side again. Just, I don't want to get too close to the roots because then they won't show up as well. So you want to put a little snow, but you don't want to take out the dark values. Let's put a little snow in there. There, so there you go. It's all snowy bank, right? I'm pressing sort of and scumbling around. You don't need to be precious with your palette knife. Not putting a huge amount of paint. Where it leaves the paint, it looks like snow's hit the rocks. And it just takes very, very little. Maybe put a little bit there, but not much, because we want that dark value. So now we have all of our rocks have snow. Now the next part we're going to do real quick, we're going to take a thin black line along our tree branches on just the right-hand side of them. 
and that is going to help make sure that our tree really pops and looks amazing when we share it with our friends because you get to totally share your fandom for Game of Thrones with all your friends. I know I do. Back to my small detail brush. And just very, very lightly, it's by pressing lightly and using a small detail brush that I get this line. If you don't think you can get that thin line, don't worry about this step. Now just go ahead and do this on the right sides of the branches. Now right here, you're gonna switch where your shadow is because the light's coming down. Go on the bottom sides of these branches. Now you've created intense winter lighting. Let's put the finishing touches on our crow with white paint. So I'm gonna get my white and I'm gonna put that just on the tip of my brush. And I'm gonna come here right into his head and I'm gonna make a little circle for his eye, then just put a dot in for reflection. Just a little dot for reflection. We'll come here, make these little hash strokes. This is the feathers for his wings. Maybe just a couple on his tail. Just showing that he's a little bit fluffy. A little bit of his beak. So I've got some detail on him now. I get to do the really fun part, which is to put in my leaves. Get your bunches of Q-tips. It's really helpful to have these ready, like we did at the beginning, because then you don't have to worry about bunching them up as you're painting. I have little bunches of four and five here, and I'm gonna go with my little bunch of five. I'm gonna dab into my darker red. I'm gonna make sure I'm happy with that pattern that I'm getting. Sometimes you can find that they're not really even and you may need to adjust. Once you have it, come to your canvas. I'm going to dab a little cluster of deep blood red leaves. Bring these down here in this little bunch. Right? Can you even make a little bunch right here, kind of floating above our little guy? Leave room for him to take off and deliver a message. The other reason it's nice to have bunches of Q-tips is just in case yours are fur furry. I include my exact brand and everything in the description. But you know, I don't know what earbuds you have where you live. Take some of these right off the canvas. This tree goes quite high. Maybe put some of these in front of a branch. Right? You're just wanting to do the stark red leaves of the wear tree. We know a little bit more about these trees now, so we kind of know why it's a bloody tree, which is sort of freaky, but. And they're saving the world from a zombie horde. It's super busy. Who knew GOT was going to go walking dead up in here? <laughs> All right. And keep going. With my dark red, I'm making a nice tree shape. You can see me pressing it out, making little clusters. Bringing a little cluster down. Sometimes I might come up in front. So make sure that this is nice. You know, you might paint out a branch. You might leave it open. It just depends on your preference for your tree. How you want your wear tree to deliver the news. Now, I'm going to get my other bunch of Q-tips and get my brighter red to create the sunny highlights on my tree. Here we go, dipping, dipping, dipping. This is my orange red. It's much brighter than the other. And I'm gonna come make these little clusters. I imagine 
sunlight hitting the tops of these. See that? And it's the balance between the light and shadow that make this work. I guess that's sort of true in Game of Thrones. It's the balance between the light and shadow. I'm trying really hard not to talk about storyline points just in case somebody's going to come paint this with me because I don't want to ever do a spoiler on any story that's as good as Game of Thrones because you never know when someone's going to start watching and then realize they got to paint a wear tree because they love it so much. I don't want to ruin the story. And uh, if you're R.R. Martin, thank you very much for the lovely, lovely world. It was a lot of work and I really appreciate it. I don't know why you would be doing a painting party style painting of your painting, but maybe you would. Just dabbing my Q-tips. Just dabbing my Q-tips, having fun. Almost done. Now I'm going to put in my face. All right. You just take this to a point you're happy, right? I feel pretty good about my wear tree. It's a fairly mystical tree, but it's not going to be fully there till we put in a face. Of course, you can go back with your traceable and use graphite to get the face on because your traceable will have a face on it. But I'm also going to show you how you can paint it in if you want to freehand it in. So I'm going to take my black paint just on the tip of my brush. And I'm going to come right up here into this midpoint of the tree. And I'm going to sweep in a little curve line that angles down. Another little curve line that angles down. Underneath this, I'm going to make almond shapes. See these little almond seed shapes? Almond seed shapes. Now, down from here, I'm going to make a little kind of partial circle. And I'm going to come over and add a little dewdrop over to the right. Add a little teardrop shape to the left. I'm going to bring down a couple of lines from the corner here and fill those in. I'll wipe this off in case it's getting gummy. And down from this, I'm going to very carefully make an upper lip and a lower lip. And I'm going to leave that just gray right there. I'm going to bring down a shadow under the nose and one line of the divot. When I have that in, I'm going to rinse that out. And I'm going to get the white paint. And above the eye, I'm going to include that. A little bit right here at the forehead. A little bit right there. Some of it down the nose. And on either side, so it's like a little drop at the nose. And on either side. Just a little white. Just a little bit. Now I like to make a little gray, which is just black and white together. And come under here and make, these are slightly, not as dark as the eyes, but not as light as the bark. A little bit of dark circle under these eyes to make this being sad. Bring this down, sad. Sad. Things are not good in the Werewood world. The last trick, dry the painting, and then we're going to make the eyes bleed. Painting's dry. Let's do our tears. So I'm going to get my darker red color loaded on the tip of my brush. And I'm going to come to just the inside of the eye and pull down 
little streaks for tears. There we go. This tree is fully wakened. It's magical properties realized. All right, I'm gonna get a little red on my brush and I'm gonna come right here. And I'm gonna make my mark. You can make yours. I wish for you that your favorite character survives this season. I hope we all just have the best time watching. I'm completely relieved because I'm just over the show hole. <laughs> be good to yourselves, be good to each other, enjoy your fandom in any way you can. I love painting this with you today. I want to see you at the easel really soon. Bye bye!